And now, more you talk now. Hey, it's Steve, and I'm here with Katie in the studio. The mask, Katie. I am. I know. You know. And this is you talk. <laughs> so, mask, Katie, Steve, you talk. Katie, we have a very special show today. Katie, fill us in. We are going to go behind the scenes and watch candy canes be made by hand by one of the only few left. Yeah, I, th I think there's less than five. I hand. think three or four. He's one of three or four. We'll have to ask him. But that actually, I mean, you can go and buy candy canes in the store, but you cannot buy candy canes like this. And the only drawback, if you, you know, for the show today, is we won't be able to smell. That amazing smell. Katie, you and I have or both taste. been. Or taste. Or taste that warm. Test. Oh, the candy cane is so cool coming right off. I mean, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to join Jerry and Susie, the owners of Logan's Candies in Ontario, California. Hi, guys. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. How are you? Hi guys, doing real well. We're about ready to pour, so if you guys are live and ready, we're live on the table. Ready, audience is still up here in standing room only. So I'm gonna be, I'll be walking in and out of the out of the screen just a little bit. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna pour the candy canes. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it right here. We're gonna walk you step through step by this live as we're making candy canes, and we just want to say welcome everybody and hope you guys enjoy the show. <laughs> so what we're doing is we've been cooking our candy for about 45 minutes. It's a mixture of sugar, water, and corn syrup. I've got a stove right over here, and I'm going to zip out of the temperature. I'm going to pour it here in just about uh, uh, just a few more seconds here, about another 30 or 40 seconds. And we're going to pour it on the table, and hope you guys will be able to see this right here. Let me tip the camera up just a little bit. And then we're going to work on the table right here. We're going to make some candy cane. We're going to add a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. And uh, welcome everybody into our home, and hopefully you can be part of our family and make your Christmas a little bit uh, sweeter. Absolutely. I love how you put that. I'm going to turn off the oven here, our stove. So I'm going to take this as an old-fashioned copper kettle here. We're going to actually pour this right onto the table here. If you guys can see that, that is hot molten lava there. That is a little bit over 320 degrees. So we're Ooh. just trying to uh, cool it down a little bit. It cooked up the temperature for about that 45 minutes. And like I said before, a mixture of sugar, water, and corn syrup. Now, Jerry, you you poured that on top of a marble table, right? A marble. Yeah, table. that is a marble slab. That's a, this is the same slab we've been using here since 1933. Same slab. Wow. All our equipment is. All from the 30s and 40s, uh, the kettles, the the, uh, the hook on the wall. We're going to show you that in just a little bit here. Our stove, our heater. <clears throat> we'll walk you step by step through here in just a few minutes and show you everything that's going on here. Of course, Katie, you and I have both seen this before, but this is so fun. It's just. But we get to see it in a different way because I've never watched it be done on screen. I've always seen it in person, yeah. so it's different. Now, Jerry, you obviously haven't doing this since the 30s. So who did this before you? So the Logan family started doing this in 1933. This is their original recipe. So this is the original marble slab they used in 33. That's amazing that you're still using the same yeah. equipment since the 30s. Now, the uh, you bought the store from your uncle, did you not? You started working for him? It was actually not my uncle. Now I'm gonna do a little flip here. So we're gonna get this started here. So we're gonna start flipping this in. So uh, now what happened is, so the, the Logan started the store back in 1933. Uh, they were out on Euclid Avenue. Now, we're on B Street in downtown Ontario here. The Logan in 1970, they ran the store all the way until 1974. And in 1974, a good friend of my mom and dad bought the store from the Logan. And they, uh, that's what the year they asked me to go to work for them. I was actually 12. I turned 13 just about a month after I started working there. And they had a bag of candy canes, growing them, and of course, <laughs> tasting them. You have to always taste them. That's the uh, best part of working here. So now you can see I've got two blocks here. I've got the smaller piece here on my left and the bigger piece on my right. This is going to be our red or the stripe of the candy cane. And the bigger piece here on my right is going to be the white part or the flavor part of the candy cane. And you'll see in just a minute here how it all pulls together here. So I'm just going to mix this flavor in just a little bit more. Now we always tell the kids and everything as we watch. You're going to watch. It does happen rather quickly. We're going to roll it out here on the table. Okay. Here we go. So we're actually going to... Uh, Move over to the hook here now. We're going to put the white on the hook here and begin to stretch it out. Now, how heavy is that? Okay, so we've got a 20-pound batch here. I've got about 17 pounds on the hook here, and there's about three pounds of keeping nice and uh, warm in front of the heater over there. But you're seeing as you pull, your powder gets a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. 
So we're doing a combination of a couple things here. We're adding a little bit of air to the candy cane and also the stretching of the sugar crystal, and that's what causes it to turn white. So it's a combination of a couple things here. As I mentioned, we're stretching out the sugar crystal and also adding air to it. Very similar to the way you might whip egg whites or how you stretch out a rubber band and the color lines up a little bit. Okay. As you can see, with each and every pull, the color gets a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. Now, Steve, I'm not sure if you've ever done this before. I know you guys have eaten a lot of candy canes over your years. You've been here quite a few times. But we're adding little air bubbles into the white part of the cane. So what that means is there's long, skinny air bubbles in there. So if you take any one of our candy canes any size and you break it, both ends off the end of it, you can actually use the candy cane like a straw. Have you ever tried that, Steve? No, right. never have, Jerry. That's well, it's kind of fun. There's tiny little thin air bubbles up the middle. So it's kind of hard to get the liquid started, but once it starts to pull up the middle of the candy cane, it, of course, dissolves the sugar. So not only does it sweeten whatever you're drinking, it'll also add a little hint of the flavor. So it's kind of fun to try. Maybe you're drinking lemonade, iced tea, water, and it'll sweeten whatever you're drinking. I huh. think I the story before our daughter, Hannah, when she was young, she would take a lemon and squish up the lemon until it got soft inside, put a hole on top of the lemon, and actually uh, put the candy can in there and then drink out the lemon and make your own sweetened peppermint lemonade. Huh. What a great candy yeah. hack. You know? Yes, that is, that's right. That is a great hack right there. You can try it at home. Have a little science project or experience there. So. so like I say, all this equipment, the equipment here, the book and everything, all the original equipment, we've had to uh, maybe do some reattaching here and there. But for the most part, we're just using the same recipes and the same uh, equipment they've been using here since the 30s. You know, that's amazing how timeless, I mean, the recipe itself, let alone uh, all the equipment. I mean, that is so amazing. Yes, it is. You know, uh, funny, about uh, well, about 15 years ago, they found some old pictures from the 50s, and they brought them down, and they said, Jerry, you got to see these great black and white pictures we found. It's the old store. And I looked at them, and I thought they were great photos, but I realized everything looks the same. Nothing's changed a lot. It's all the same equipment. So, pretty funny. But, you know, there's something to be said for that, Jerry. You know, there's that, that solid reputation. I mean, you know, we've been coming down for several years. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's so fun to come and see it. And this is a kind of a special that we wanted to share with, with our audience and, and friends and, and uh, give them a chance to watch this. Absolutely. We appreciate that. So, well, we feel like you guys have been a part of our family for many years. Steve, I know we've known you for just over 25 years or more. I know one of your favorites is that peppermint ice cream that's going to be available soon. So, Okay, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I should have said that maybe, but I know you do love that peppermint ice cream. So. I do. I do too much. Maybe. Hey, Jerry, we have a question. What did a candy cane sell for back in the 1930s? Uh, you know, I have an old uh, catalog and an old, some old things about uh, about six, seven cents is the earliest one that I have. When wow. I started working here, they sold for uh, 35 cents each. And now the same size candy cane sells now for two twenty five. So definitely a little bit of uh, increase over the years. But you know that still is very reasonable considering this is made by hand. I mean, we're not talking about a machine here. All right, now, how many uh, other candy makers are there left like you that still do this in pepper? There are not too many. There's a few here in uh, Northern California. I've got a few friends back east that do this, but for the most part, it's really a lost and dying art here. So. We're going to move over to the table here now, the heater. It's a so I'm going to take this off the hook here. Now, we're going to show you a few candy canes on the window up here. And if you look close, you'll notice that they have five little stripes and one big stripe. That is kind of our trademark here, Logan's. And that's what we're going to put together in front of the heater here. Now, that's the stripe pattern we've been using since 1933. Five little stripes and one big stripe. So that's another tradition that you've carried on all these years. Yes, yes. Now, the story told to me years ago, Some can back in the old days when all the candy canes were handmade, everybody would put their own stripe configuration on there. So the guy down the street might have used three stripes in one, maybe four in one. Well, the Logan's family picked five in one. That way you can tell your candy canes apart from the guy down the street that had another candy store. So that's just the same stripe pattern we stuck with all these years. So That's awesome, though. Yeah. That, is, that is very cool. So this first piece that I showed you, I'm going to begin to stretch it out here. And when we get it just the right length, we'll then cut it into our five equal pieces. And that will make up the five little stripes, just like we showed you on all those candy canes there. So we're just going to stretch this out here. And we're going to start counting with stripe number one. There's stripe number one there. Next will be stripe number two. Nice. And next comes stripe number three. And then after stripe number three, next will be stripe number four. 
And last but not least, our final stripe will be number five. So I'm going to put these together here now. That's amazing. Yeah, that really is. It's very, very warm. I do have the gloves on for a reason, because it is still probably around 185 or, or more degrees. So oh, wow. <clears throat> That's still pretty hot. I don't know if you guys can see this now, but here's our five little stripes, kind of a little blanket of stripes, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, we still have our big red stripe here. Now we're going to bring the big block in here. Thank you, Gary. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to put our stripes right on the outside of the block here. Looks like you're putting the stripes on a massive tick tack, you know? Yes. <laughs> A lot of kids say it looks like bacon, or I've heard some people say it looks like a sushi roll. I'm not a big sushi fan, so I wouldn't know that, but uh, there's our stripes on there. Now, we like to say if we add a little bit of blue and some stars here, we'd have the American flag. We also have campaigns for 4th of July. So we're going to put that in front of the heater here. I'm going to take my red stripe. We're going to shape it slightly. And then we're going to put the red stripe just on the other side of the block here, just like that. So we're going to do a little cut here. There, we're going to do a little roll and a little bending, and here we go. Here is candy cane number one. We're going to do a live in color. That's Very amazing. Cool. Very cool from that. From the Oh, it's, it's amazing to see the, the impression that it takes to, to do this. And make about the, close to 400 candy canes out of this batch right here. Out of oh, just wow. that batch. Wow. Now, I wish you guys were here because now is where it tastes so good and you can really get that smell, and it is quite amazing. Now, we're going to bring out one of our old pieces of equipment we've used for many years. This is a piece of equipment that's about 95 to 100 years old. We've been using it here in Logan since 1933. We're going to demonstrate. This is my wife Susie here. We're the owners here in Logan. She's going to demonstrate it for us. We like to call it the crush off. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So I don't know if you know this, you guys, but you know we actually have a dentist right across the street from us here. I'm not sure if that's a bad thing. So. <laughs> that that's not it bad. seems quite fitting to me. Nice. Funny. We also, of course, as you know, you guys, we make the ribbon candy here. We make the ribbon candy in about 26 different flavors. And we're going to show you a couple of those there. There's uh, one of our ribbon candy jars. Now, that one right there is called Sweet Abby Pie. That's named after our daughter, Abigail, when she was born. It's a combination of cinnamon and green apple. We thought we would uh, name a candy after her also. We didn't want the girls to fight. So it works pretty well. <laughs> now, we do make our candy canes from, you know, five and a half inches all the way up to six feet. Um, the ones that she showed you on the wall there just a few minutes ago are probably around... 27, 28 inches long, but we've made candy canes up to six feet. You know, we sell a few, few, three and a half, three footers every year. And just you know, we take the big sweet tooth to eat that big candy cane. It's amazing you can make a six foot long candy yeah, cane. That's yeah, we uh, we don't get a big calling for it because they're, uh, but every once in a while you get a group that will want to buy it. Maybe they'll want to raffle it off or something like that. But sure. actually, well, and you guys might remember this from being in the store. On the wall up here behind me, I've got the world's largest 100% handmade candy cane. We're going to show that to you real quick also. This is up on the wall behind us here. This candy cane is uh, over 36 pounds in weight. It is over wow. 16 feet long. Wow. And we made it mounted on the wall about 25 years ago this December 24th. That is really crazy. And now, I'm to, before we uh, move on a little further, we want to share a little story with you. I know you guys know this, but we like to share this every night. When we have our groups come in and make the candy canes, we get a chance to share the candy cane story. And we really love to share it with our audience out here tonight. So, you know, most people think the candy cane is just an insignificant piece of Christmas candy. But actually, the gentleman who invented the candy cane in the United States, sometime around the mid-1800s, he was trying to come up with a single piece of candy that would tell the entire Christmas story, all in that one candy. Well, he came up with a candy cane. If you take any one of our candy canes any size, pull it up in the traditional shape, you'll notice that it looks kind of like the shepherd's staff which is done to remind us of Jesus as a good shepherd. You take that same candy cane and turn it upside down, and now it becomes the letter J. And, of course, the letter J is standing for Jesus. Because as you guys all know, the true meaning of celebration of Christmas is actually the celebration of the birth of Christ. Everything in the candy cane has a meaning all the way from the white part of the cane, standing for the purity of Christ, the red, the blood of Christ, the, cro the uh, harvest of the cane, the flavor, the stripes of the on the cross for us. It's all told, that story, all within the one candy cane. And that's the story behind the candy cane. We get to share that... But we're, um, we're, we're thankful that we get to share that with our groups every night that we're watching the candy cane making. That's awesome you yeah. get to do that. That's very cool. And it's great history to learn because a lot of people don't realize that. Yes, it is. It's kind of a lost uh, lost story, but uh, that's the story behind the candy cane. So Now, we make these candy canes. Uh, we've been doing this uh, since the beginning of October. We're going to work all the way through till December 24th. In fact, we'll be working... We'll work it about four or five days after Christmas through about the 31st of uh, December. Really? 
Lots of people that still want to buy them and watch them. And then, uh, so we'll make, by the time we get to December 24th, we'll be on Wolf Made a little bit over 100,000 candy canes again this year, Steve. And how many shows will you do? Uh, we generally do shows uh, every night of the week, five nights a week, three times a night, and then uh, maybe sometimes on the weekend. Um, in October, we worked about two to three nights a week, and now November and December, we're here every night of the week, Monday through Friday, and a lot of times on Saturday also. Wow. wow. So, so. Now, uh, somebody just asked, are the candy canes seasonal? You, you have candy canes all year long, but you do different things with the same candy, do you not? Uh, yeah, we're going to show that to you in just a second, and we're going to show you some of those. We, of course, Christmas season is by far our biggest candy cane season. But we also do candy cane hearts for Valentine's Day. We're going to show you some samples here. That is our candy cane heart there. They come in two flavors, peppermint and cinnamon. And then, of course, the fall, next holiday would be um, St. Patty's Day. We do candy canes that are green and white. We do the traditional candy cane. Oh, that's very cool. The that, is flavor, that is a green apple flavored candy cane there. We all become Irish on St. Patty's Day, right? That's right. Even Italians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then on uh, for Easter or springtime, we make a pastel colored candy cane. That's a little candy cane butterfly. We do bunny heads, and we have a little egg shape here to show you. And they come in two flavors for Easter time. They come in peppermint and pink lemonade. And then for we also do an Easter basket here. This is our candy cane in the shape of an Easter basket. You can fill it with chocolates. You can eat the whole basket. It's our environmentally safe packaging. You can eat all the candy, and all you have left is that little wrapper there. And then for 4th of July, we talked about this earlier, we make uh, red, white, blue candy canes. And uh, we make them for 4th of July, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. Cool. That's very cool. And then for Halloween and Thanksgiving season, we do a fall color candy cane. We do an orange and black, cream, orange cream circle candy cane. Oh, that. Kind of a newer flavor for us. We've been doing that for about, this is our third year of doing that. And then we do for fall or Thanksgiving, we do a fall colored candy cane. And this one is root beer flavor, which is one of my favorite flavors. Oh, yeah. we have to try that I one, know. too. I haven't uh, tried that I one. I haven't tried that one. Dad's love root beer, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Coming up here in just a few days, we begin Hanukkah. We do candy canes in blue and white. There's our Star of David's right there. That's well, cool. Flavor also. Boy, you really cover the bases. And to talk yeah. about covering the bases, you also did a special one for uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, you know, that pun there, the bases. Yes, here we go. Here's our Dodger candy cane right here. I hope you can see that up close enough. But there's our... Blue and white candy cane in the shelf of the shape of the L.A. Yes, we do cover all the bases here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give you a rim shot, Jerry, if I have my drums, but I don't. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, anyway, so, yeah, we do it for every holiday. Of course, Christmas is our biggest season. One last thing here. Now, we do some candy cane artwork. We do, you may have seen some of our pieces on display at the local museum. This is kind of a little, uh, what looks like Santa Claus, but if you look close enough, you can see that is actually a self-portrait of me. You know, some people call me Santa Claus, so... <laughs> you know, it's fascinating to me how creative you guys have become with so many the different flavors, and you're tempting me, so I'm going to have to come down in the next few days and pick up some of these things. But, you know, the, the, the artwork, um, the great big huge, you know, the largest one in, in the world, and, and the little baskets and the hearts for Valentine's Day. I mean, it's mm -hmm. endless. Who would think that you could do so much with candy canes? Yeah. Well, I'd like to take uh, credit for all of those, but some of those are just our customers telling us trying to do things over the years. When the Rams went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago, we actually made Rams horns and candy canes to the Rams. Wow. wow. Cool. Well, and, and uh, up until uh, just last year, you guys were helping us. Uh, we were doing a, a special event for homeless teenagers in Hollywood, and you created a special little candy cane for them. Yeah, that was a special time for us the last few years. We've done up here, guys. I'm just we're very sad we can't do it this year, but we know that's going to go ahead and happen again in the future. We're working on that and, and uh, hoping. In okay. fact, we have a couple other cities that are asking us to come and do something. We're well, yeah. love to be involved and help out with that for sure, you guys. So let us well, know. we love doing it with you guys. It's it's such a fun thing. And, and to see the the uh, these young adults, you know, the smile on their face where when they realize they're getting something very special that nobody else can have, um, you know, and, and that's really uh, such a tribute to, to you and Susie and the rest of your crew. I mean, it's just a, a very special thing. So we're grateful for that and, and uh, grateful for the uh, candy cane ice cream as well. Yeah, so I will look so forward to so that. Good. <laughs> we love being a part of that. So thank you guys for letting us be involved there. Now, Jerry, you guys do, uh, people can go online and order some of the different candies, correct? Now, they actually would have to call the candy store to ship uh, 
There's some uh, things they can view pricing online, but if they want to place an order, they do have to call us and still the old fashioned way. Or we can ship some candy within the United States. Uh, they can come in and pick up an order here if they'd like to, or whatever works best for them. So, so the easiest thing to do is call. What is that number to call? Uh, the number here is 909-984-5410. They can Google Logan's Candies and it comes up our website. The phone number is on there and they can just give us a call uh, or even send us a message through email or face, uh, Facebook or Instagram. And we can uh, respond back to them and let them know how they can place an order. Well, we'll put all of that on our website and, and make it make sure it's in the notes for this show. Uh, so that, Give us that phone number again. 909-984-5410. And I'd encourage uh, those of you that are with us on the show today, definitely give them a call, place that order. I, uh, it's hard for me to walk in the store and walk out of that store without uh, a bag full of stuff because it's, so, it's just so yummy. It's, it's amazing the different things you have. So. And it's all made by hand, which is so yeah. cool. Well, as we like to say here, Logan's, how sweet it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm full of puns tonight. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. We love the puns. We love those puns. Uh, well, we're happy to take some more questions if anybody has any questions, but uh, we're just going to keep rolling this out for about another 35 minutes or so. You guys are certainly welcome to watch longer, but uh, we do appreciate you guys coming out tonight and watching, and uh, like I say, gladly take any questions if somebody has any questions for us. We carry over 700 different kinds of candies here at Logan's. Now, out of those uh, 700 that we carry, about 200 of those we actually make right here. Five wow. Brittle, caramel apples, toffee. Of course, the candy canes and ribbon candy we make here, chocolate covered, just about everything you can imagine, nut clusters, cookies, uh, toffee, all kinds of honeycomb. We make our own honeycomb here. So lots and lots of selection to choose from. Wow. Now we got a question for you. Okay. Wants to know, how do you keep ants from eating the big one on the wall all these years? <laughs> well, we, uh, we have to have a service help us out with that. But, yeah, we've been very lucky. We don't, uh, we don't get too many ants here. But, yeah, you would think we would be an ant magnet. But, uh, yeah. Luckily, no problem with that, so at least not when the weather's cold. That's always a good thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate everybody joining us for the show. It's been a very special show. It's a fun show. It's unique. You know, we love being part of people's Christmas here. You know, we uh, it's very hard because we, you know, for many years, we're just uh, we're so busy at the holidays, we feel like we don't get to enjoy them. But, you know, about 25 years ago, we just realized we have to embrace that we're part of people's holidays. And that's what we love. We get people, families that come down here, second, third generation. They've never seen the candy cane making before. They keep bringing their kids. So it's just a generational thing that we keep going down here a little bit. Uh, you know, yeah, that's, a, that's very what, cool. a, what a great attitude. You know, it's. You know, I kind of wondered. I mean, here you're working right up to Christmas Eve, but but you really are. You're, you've been a part of our Christmas for many years, and um, we look forward to many more. And, and uh, it, it's just great that you do. More questions, Katie? Um, several people are saying want to come see the show and you changed it this year so they have to request online correct yeah due to the covid we're actually having some trouble because we're just only able to bring 25 percent of the amount of people we normally would in so we're having to turn a lot of people away but i will tell you in the next few weeks here we're going to try to do some live facebooks and instagram like you guys are doing so people can watch in and uh watch it live at night like they're doing now and we're going to try to keep that going now uh, because there's just not enough room and enough time during the day to bring everybody down here to the candy store. Oh. Uh, so that's something they can watch for. Uh, follow us on our social media, and we'll uh, let them know we're going to do some of that in the future. And we'll put your social on uh, up on the website as well so people can check it there. So uh, They can go to the website, Logan'sCandies.com. We're also in Logan's Candies on Instagram, Logan's Candy on Facebook. We've got some great TikToks. We're on TikTok now. We've got the, a few of our videos that have gone viral. In fact, just yesterday we had uh, BuzzFeed picked up uh, one of our videos and ran it, and in less than 24 hours, there were over 6 million views. Oh, wow. that's awesome. Congratulations. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, that was very unexpected, but we uh, suddenly our Instagram following went up uh, uh, over 200% or almost 300% increase in followers in less than 24 hours. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, they want to know what you guys' favorite flavored candy canes are that you make. <laughs> Well, I like to tell people that whatever we're making at the time, when it's nice and warm, that's always my favorite because that's the best way to eat it. But, um, <laughs> you know, I love, like, some of the fruit flavors. Uh, pink lemonade is definitely one of my favorites. I know my wife's favorite, my daughter's, they love the toasted marshmallow. But I always tell people if I only could do one flavor of candy cane, I would do uh, peppermint because it never gets too sweet. You can add it to cookies. You can add it to ice cream. You can put it on your pie. You can add it into your coffee. And it always has that nice... Uh, that holiday taste to it. So I would say, yeah. 
go with peppermint. Now you just gave me another idea, Jerry. I'll have to put uh, put some in my coffee. That sounds great. Yeah, it makes a great taste, so very good. Well, hot chocolate too. Sure. Someone's asking if you sell ice cream by the cone or in containers. I think they do both. Yeah. Uh, we have it. Uh, we have a scoop ice cream. You can do it in a cup or a cone. And we do get in a few uh, quarts and pints, but for the most part, it's a one scoop at a time. How late are you guys open? They want to know your hours and if you have a menu online with all of your inventory that can be ordered. We don't have everything up online. There are some uh, Christmas items up on the website. Yes. If they go to our Instagram or Facebook, we've got they look through some of the photos. It lists all kinds of good stuff on there. And then also... Um, yeah, they can call a place or whatever. Yeah, that's the best way to do it is maybe go to some of the pictures on Facebook and Instagram. Lots of great photos of all the different items we carry. You might have to look back a few uh, posts, but after you know 30 or 40 different posts, you get to see a pretty good selection of what we carry here. Sure. I don't know if you can notice too, but the stripe does kind of change throughout the batch. In the beginning, you get a little bit more red. Towards the end, you get a little bit more white, and then maybe more red comes back in again. So it always kind of entertains us as we see the different stripes and the patterns in the candy canes. Nice. Yeah. It definitely is something that changes each time, I would guess, then, just slightly. It does. Every year we, tell, we tell people it's like a snowflake. Every candy cane is just slightly different. Oh, great analogy. That's very cool. You've got some fans, too, Jerry, where yeah. you keep seeing we love Logan's. We do, too. <laughs> We're very thankful for our fans. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of great customers. They uh, bring in their grandkids, and they're, they bring in their kids. Oh, that's uh, real special for us to be part of their lives over the years. So, well, what a great, great thing for you guys! What a great encouragement. By the way, somebody wants to know: Do you do curbside pickup? Yes, you can place an order, and we we'll bring it right up to the front of the store. They just call and place an order, and do curbside pickup. Absolutely, awesome. Uh, we appreciate you taking time yeah. to let us kind of go behind the scenes and let our audience see this because this is something that uh, you can't see uh, typically uh, if you don't live in Southern California and close enough to drive to Ontario. So uh, we hope those of you that have joined us for the show tonight have enjoyed it. Uh, and please give uh, Jerry and Susie a call at Logan's Place an Order. Uh, it makes a great Christmas gift. Um, you can put it in stockings. You know, for me, it's hard because I, some of it doesn't get to where it's supposed to get because it ends up <laughs> somehow, some way, Jerry, ends up in my mouth. So... <laughs> And then remember, we have all the other holidays. Valentine's, Easter, we carry Mother's Day candy. So we try to cover uh, candy for every holiday. There you go. The one-stop sweet shop. And again, Jerry, I want to thank you so much. This means a lot. And, and I know a lot of people have enjoyed it. And this is going to be on Instagram TV as well. So people that, uh, those of you uh, that want one of your friends to see it or a family member, just go to at you talk Radio on Instagram TV. All right. Just you talk radio uh, on Instagram TV yeah. at you talk radio is our social. So we do want to um, say thanks to everybody for joining us. Thank you guys. Thank you our family, guys. your family, all our employees. Thank you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. To you. This is you talk radio.